Hi guys, my name is Adam Milton Barker. I'm the founder of Tech Bubble Technologies and also an Intel software innovator. I work a lot on artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things, and that is what my main role in the Intel Software Innovator program is. At the moment, my main focus is around natural linguistics and computer vision and how the two can integrate with the Internet of Things to create intelligent automated environments. So my talk is focused around real world examples that I currently develop more than a technical breakdown of developing the technologies. But I'll explain the various technologies that I use through the development of these projects. And I've also made the source codes available in our GitHub, including full walkthroughs to help you get started in machine learning and the IoT. So here's a bit of uh, background info on how I became involved in artificial intelligence in the Internet of Things. So I began developing around 14 years ago, and my main involvement in development for a number of years was websites, Facebook applications, and games, and business administration systems. And I began to work on a platform that would allow me to run my business by automating as much of it as possible, which has evolved over the years to what is now known as the TechBubble Technologies ecosystem, which is powered by Arc, the TechBubble GUI, and Toa, my online AI assistant. So in 2013, I came across a markup language known as Artificial Intelligence Markup Language, or AML, which is an XML compliant markup language developed for natural language understanding. At that point, artificial intelligence was beginning to push its way through to the general public, but not many people knew about AI. I began developing Toa, which was originally designed to assist me with running my business and also to assist customers to run theirs and to provide help for people using the websites that I built. And Toa at that point was an online system and included speech recognition and synthesis through the browser and the natural language processing was powered by AML. But I was also working on a number of projects through OIS Core that included C++, NLP agents and a medical neural network built in Java. So in 2014, I received an Intel Galileo from Microsoft for a project idea I submitted to the Microsoft Developer Program for IoT. And not long after that, I began to work on creating projects that allowed TOA to communicate with IoT devices. I'd noticed a massive disconnect between the general public and technology, especially regarding artificial intelligence. So I began writing a weekly article named Tech Bubble, which was in the local newspaper, and I was publishing articles on techbubble.info. I was also running a number of technology-focused pages on Google+, including my own, Tech Bubble, and OIS Core. And I was writing a lot about artificial intelligence, and over the next couple of years, the pages generated nearly a million views between them. So many years later, uh, Toa and TAS, which is the current version of the project idea I submitted to Microsoft, are still one of my main focuses. I've developed a number of systems that include Toa and also TIA, which is an agent powered by my own NLU, uh, such as the AI e-commerce store, a project. Uh, a project we recently debuted at Collision Conference and one of the reasons why I'm here. So that's a quick run through of how I got into AI and IoT and a brief intro to some of the main projects I am working on. So let's get on with the talk. Okay, so my talk today is about artificial intelligence and machine learning that can be used in the Internet of Things. I will briefly touch upon the use of machine learning in the cloud, and we'll also talk about machine learning on device and the edge as opposed to the cloud. I will use the TOA and TAS projects as examples and show you some demonstration videos of projects to give you some real world examples of how AI can work seamlessly with the IoT. So machine learning in the cloud. So although AML played a large role in the, in the development of TOA in the early days, and it more or less did what I needed it to do, I began to realize that it was not really scalable. The training process was very long-winded as I had to provide every possible way that a person could say something so that the intents would match. 
plus it was coming a kind of outdated technology and um, I'd created my own version of AML that I named Tamil which made it more suited to my needs but scalability and response times were still a concern I had so through research for my AI articles I began to take an interest in machine learning although I had a good understanding of AI from what I had learned through writing the articles and my experience in working on the medical neural network I still had not totally, totally grasped machine learning. Machine learning in the cloud was becoming quite popular with a number of services becoming available such as Microsoft Cognitive Services, API.ai or now known as Dialogflow, IBM Watson and many others. This seemed like a good place for me to break the ice so I began to look into various cloud services available so that I could rebuild Teller using machine learning and work out how these types of platforms function. In addition, I had also been taking various MOOCs in computer science, IoT and machine learning, such as Stanford Machine Learning on Coursera, and more recently, the Deep Learning Specialization. After testing systems made with Microsoft Louis, IBM Watson, WIT AI, and other platforms like that, I decided that API was a more API.ai was more suited to my needs. So I replicated the AML version of Toa using machine learning through their platform. I have many use cases for Toa, but as this is an IoT conference, I will show you how I use Toa to communicate with IoT devices I have built. The following is a video that I have used in a couple of previous talks. So if anyone has already seen this, I apologize in advance but it does provide a good example of how machine learning in the cloud can be used in connection with the IoT. This video shows the previous version of the TechBubble GUI and how I can monitor and control IoT devices with the use of natural linguistics in the cloud. Thank you. 
So in that video, I was able to demonstrate a number of examples of using machine learning in the cloud with the IoT. In the example, the speech synthesis and recognition, the parts that allow TOA to speak and hear, are cloud-based. The natural language processing is done through the cloud, which is API.ai, and the intensity and entity classification determines how TOA can communicate with the Tetable IoT Jumpway, which is our IoT platform as a service that uses MQTT, allowing TOA to monitor and control the IoT devices. In some cases, using cloud service for machine learning is just not feasible. One such case, one such case is, um, yes, I'll send through the, the slides soon. Um, uh, one such case is using it in real-time computer vision for monitoring real-time environments, which leads me on to the second project, which is TAS PVO. There have been many versions of TAS over 13 uh, over the years, three of these versions have been made available through the Tech Bubble Technologies GitHub with tutorials on how to connect them up. Each version has different features and each one uses different technologies. One thing that has stayed constant with the various versions is that they have all done the processing of the videos locally, whether on board or via a local server. There are a number of reasons for this. The main reason being that to process one or more of the video streams 24 hours a day, seven days a week, would run up a rather large bill. But you also have latency issues and response times to take into consideration. So another reason is privacy as well. One of the things that I pride myself in is taking as many precautions as possible to uphold people's privacy and security in any of the projects that I develop. If you use cloud-based machine learning for computer vision, then the frames have to be sent to the cloud. This means that whatever the service you're using has access to a very personal area of your life. So this is something that I've worked to try and avoid. And incidentally, this issue is equally true for natural language processing, which is why I began to develop my own NLU engine. Um, I'll take you through the several versions of TAS and explain how I handled the video processing locally. So the first solution was to use OpenCV and Har Cascades with an eigenfaces model. And basically users could upload their training data through the Tetrable GUI, which was then sent securely to the device via MQTT uh, for training on the device itself. Um, this solution was, was good as a proof of concept, but identification was not really accurate and processing time was, was really quite slow. So that original version um, has now been opened up as an example for the IoT Jumpway Developer Program and is available on the Techbubble Technologies GitHub in the, Intel, in the IoT Jumpway rep, uh, Raspberry Pi repository. The second solution was developed whilst at the IoT Solutions World Congress Hackathon in Barcelona. It was an Intel and Microsoft Hackathon. And it won our team the Intel Experts Award for building a deep learning neural network on the Intel Dual. This solution still included OpenCV, but just to detect the faces. Um, and CAFE was used to identify them. We actually managed to build the deep learning, deep learning neural network on the Intel Dual, 
but uh, due to the time constraints, we were unable to complete the full functionality of the automated smart home. But we had a really cool time working on the project and were very honored to win the Intel Experts Award. Our use case in that project was automated healthcare rather than security. The idea was that users could train the device to recognize the dependent family members and communicate with them uh, with the smart home autonomously to change the surrounding around the dependent family members needs. The third solution was to use OpenCV to detect faces and pass them through a custom trained Inception V3 model using TensorFlow and Inception V3 is one of Google's um, computer vision models and I created the ability to carry out transfer learning directly on the device which was a Raspberry, 3, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 at that time. So users, similar to, uh, similar to the other versions, users could upload their training data through the TechBubble GUI and then it was sent over to the device for training on board. So this solution was a massive improvement and accuracy for detecting known people was almost 100%. But uh, I hadn't uh, identified in the early stages uh, an issue which I now know to be a common issue at the moment, which is the open set recognition issue. And this issue is where the network will identify anyone that was unknown to the network as one of the known people. So at the time of making the video that you will see next, I was unaware of this issue. Um, and I've been working quite hard to get this solution um, this solution ready so in the video I was very happy about it but I, I wasn't aware of the issue that, uh, that I found out later on and there was actually no document uh, no documented cases that I could find that if anybody ever doing transfer learning of the Inception V3 model on a Raspberry Pi and um, but unfortunately the open set recognition issue remains a problem with the this version of TATS Initially, we built this using the open CV uh, and a one way neural network that uses the one cascade to identify uh, a person. There was a few issues with the fact that it wasn't always identifying who the person was every time. In fact, it was actually quite hard. Uh, most of the times when we did demos, we were lucky that it actually did identify at the right time that we were recording. So over the last few days, what I've been looking at is TensorFlow, and uh, more specifically the Inception V3 model. And it's possible to retrain the final layer of the network um, with less images and, on, uh, and require less computation power. So this is quite a good thing to have done because uh, we've actually done this on a rapid pattern. As of yet, I haven't found any examples of anybody doing this on a Raspberry Pi. In fact, the person in the created the installable version of TensorFlow on a Raspberry Pi told me that it would probably crash and that could have happened. So, what's happening now is, as you can see, it's an identifying every single time. Um, the other issue that we have with the previous version is the prediction stage. So, it was around about 15 to 20 seconds to actually identify it. And like I said, it wasn't always identifying it. But if you can read the text on here, and then it's identifying it every single time in the TV first, which is a massive improvement. And it's going to push us forward very, very quickly uh, with the progress. And again, this is done on a rapid pattern. This isn't done on the GPU, it, it's done on a CPU or a very low context. So for the fourth solution, I used a system that I developed on the foundations of OpenFace. And I moved to using a local server to house the AI rather than doing the identification on board as using OpenFace on the Raspberry Pi was quite, uh, quite poor. So this move meant that training the, uh, the AI was only required on the local server rather than on every single device that might be in the house. 
So as with the TensorFlow implementation, I actually came across the open set recognition issue where unknown people were being identified as known people. So far, I've managed to resolve this issue through the use of an unknown class that contained around 500 images of random people that weren't available in the training data sets for the known people. Although this solution may not work across the board in cases like using the technology in public places where it could interact with many different people and possibly interact with somebody that looks similar to one of the unknown people. It works in small, uh, small environments such as offices or homes. Um, in an ongoing issue on the OpenFace GitHub repo, a number of people seem to have adopted my solution. For the fifth solution, the server used for the AI was rehomed onto an Intel NUC, which was kindly provided by Intel. So thanks again, guys, for the support on the project. And um, the structure of the network also changed. The program that handled the facial recognition and identification could now connect to multiple IP cameras. Previously, the cameras would send the frames through MQTT to the broker, which would then forward them to the local server. With this move, the identif identification process is more efficient. And also the camera devices only need to stream. They don't need to actually be connected to the IoT. Um, so third party devices are now supported. So I was very happy to be given the opportunity to demonstrate this project at the Intel booth at Code Motion in Amsterdam this year. And I met and worked with some really cool people at the booth, uh, one of which was the former um, program manager, Francesco Baldassari. Um, sometimes I say that name wrong, so I hope I got the, uh, the pronunciation right this time. This was really cool as Francesco was the person that onboarded me onto the Innovator program, so it was great to meet him in person. And in addition, this was the first time TAS had ever been used, uh, it being tested, sorry, in public. So I was excited, but also very nervous. The demonstration of TAS included the open face version of TAS and another project from the IoT Jumpway GitHub repo. Um, that uses serial, commun uh, serial to communicate with an Arduino Uno. And this was a very simple proof of concept in, in the event that a known person was detected, a blue LED light attached to the Arduino was triggered, and in the event of an unknown person, a red LED and buzzer was triggered. The stream was really quite slow and, and not really real time. And um, This issue is something that has been solved in the latest version of TAS, which I will tell you about very soon. So in a further addition to the system, I added the ability for the hub to process frames from a real sense camera and classify them. This massively increased the quality of the streams and the frames that were captured and also reduced issues I was having with lighting. The version has also been open sourced, um, which is available in the TechBubble Intel repo. Um, the version on GitHub was developed on an Intel NUC, but any Linux device should work. Which leads us on to the final version of TAS, which is TAS PVL.
Okay, so as you saw from the video, TAS PVL is the latest version of TAS to be open sourced. And this version was created on an Intel NUC with Intel Optane memory, which was again kindly provided by Intel. And it's currently available as a Windows command line application with desktop and Linux versions coming soon. And um, TAS PVL uses the Intel Computer Vision SDK and specifically OpenCV PVL, which is Intel's own version of um, OpenCV. With all the previous versions, a minimum of 10 to 30 images per person were required to train TAS to know who a known person was. With TAS PVL, it requires one image, which is handled through the console application by capturing the frame when instructed to do so and saving that frame into a, a known database, which is a massive improvement. Another feature that has been massively improved is the facial identification of OpenCV. In previous versions, I had issues with lighting being a problem, and this was partially resolved through moving towards using Intel RealSense cameras, but the current version, um, I have yet to find any issues with, the, uh, with this, even when using the standard webcam. And the final most relevant improvement is the speed at which it can process the frames identify people in the frames and whether it knows them or not and play back the frames as a, as a stream. Overall, TAS has massively improved through the use of the new NUC and the Intel Computer Vision SDK. I recorded a demonstration yesterday at our booth at Web Summit so that I could demonstrate the capabilities of TAS PVL in, in the wild. So it was quite loud at the event, so it may be difficult to, for you to hear what I was saying, but basically in the demonstration, I show how computer vision can work with IoT. And the demo was very similar to the one I presented at Code Motion, except for the communication is done directly between the device and TAS, rather than via an application that forwarded the commands through serial. So at first, the visitor, the visitor to the booth was unknown to TAS. You can see this in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a red light that comes on every few, few seconds. Um, this, is uh, this is showing that TAS does not know who that person is. Uh, and it sent a warning through the IoT jumpway to the Edison device, um, which is an, IoT, uh, an example of the IoT alarm, which is also in our GitHub. And once I register the visitor as a known person, TAS is able to identify them uh, any time again in the future. And you can see this by the blue light being triggered, which means that TAS has identified a known user. But the event was a really big success yesterday, and it was the first time we had demonstrated this version in the wild. So again, it was a bit of a nervous start off, but there was no issue with lighting. And the lighting was, <coughs> excuse me, the lighting was very intense there. It was very bright. There was a lot of spotlights over our heads. Um, but there was no issue whatsoever with that. The identification was very fast and could handle many people in the frame at the same time. And I think overall during the day, there was probably about five times that it misidentified someone and a few more times where they were facing tasks at a funny angle after they'd been saved as a, train, as a known person. But still, I feel that this is an amazing accomplishment due to the amount of people that we had uh, visit the booth during the day. Technology and the computer vision technology at the computer vision. 
Pigeon has DK by interest. So the idea is that this opportunity is to follow us up by OTI. It could be a number of different scenarios. One of the times that we created the, this, this demonstration, we did at the Intel uh, we did that based on uh, dependent family members. So if you have a grandma, maybe when she walks in the room, if it's bright, the lights too bright, then you know, recognise it as grandma and turn the bad lights down. Uh, or it could be that maybe if she's walking out of the door and she's not supposed to, then you can alert somebody else in the house and then she's got the door and the door. This is an open beta, open source version of the project, which you can download on our GitHub. It's a Windows application, and we've got two versions of the beta at the moment, which is totally free. I do a lot of Intel to get those sort of out to get that to work with. There's two versions that uses the real sense. So this is where the machine learning is done, uh, user vision, and then the IoT device is also just connected to Wi-Fi and it's waiting for the response from whatever the outcome of this is. So each time this sensor expands through, then the device will be that on. So the source code for the demonstration that we did yesterday, both the um, the task version and the uh, the IoT alarm, are both available in the Intel repo on our Tech Bubble Technologies GitHub. Um, so you're free to download that and have a play around with it. And uh, obviously, once you, you're comfortable with using that, you can uh, you can expand it into to fit into any of your own projects and and, and build your own solutions around that. And um, so that brings us to the end of my talk and demonstrations on how artificial intelligence and machine learning can be used in the Internet of Things. And I hope you enjoyed the talk as much as I did uh, developing the projects. Mm -hmm.